for our let's play of abduction. Last time we went for a hike in Captar. Fix that door that's blocking us in Murray. And now we're in Farley's secret stash. Bunch of paintings of Captar here. Music. Toy robots. The Antikythera mechanism. Well, probably a model of it, not the actual thing, I don't think. Yeah. Bunny! Yay. Toy boat, samurai otter. Samurai, if you will, if you're a Pokemon fan. Uh. Tiny gems. Three very familiar tiny gems. Oh, ain't that sweet. She's got an embroidered pillow of her initial. That's just adorable. That seems to be a various collection of rocks. Swirly painting. A pair of scissors. With someone's initials on it. Lovey dovey stuff, I guess. I don't think Caroline will mind us peeking. We just got here and we need intel. 15,997 AH. De Valaine. They. I can't find the words. It's such a foreign life cycle. Or perhaps not. They launch themselves across the expanse of space, preserved for eons until the last their technological arcs can own in and carry them to a new home. They have no connection with their predecessors. But in spite of this, perhaps because of this, they have amazing recollection of their history. Their stories are epic, reaching back through the eons. Unlike many of us who were abducted, they are abducted as a whole. Their scoop moved the entire facility that was about to be annihilated. Oh, sorry, that's that. This is where it mentioned that Murray got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Jumped ahead a bit. I've come to believe that they, perhaps more than any of us, have a deeper understanding of whatever this strange system is that we find ourselves in. Sixteen three thirty three AH. Need to write this down. We buried Ji Yun today. This place never really agreed with her. Kept to herself mostly, depressed and downcast. Anyway, I digress. Say it after the brief words were spoken. I was the last to leave. I wandered to the dome as I often do, and looked out at the undulating Saurian weirdness beyond the cell wall. Movement caught my eye. Now, on very rare occasions, we've seen Mo Fang scrambling about in the distance, but. There have been fewer and fewer sightings over the years. But before me was a tall, haggard Mo Fang running desperately, almost directly toward me from one of the distant structures. It, so can't tell a Jenner, got closer and closer. Thought it would see me and stop, or turn around, or be curious about this strange dome and our world inside it. But it continued running quickly, almost directly to my position. I was frozen in a place of curiosity until my reflexes took over at the last moment. I leapt out of the way. But rather than hit the dome or fall backward, or come through into unraft, the dome flashed its familiar tone and the mofang vanished. I was stunned for a bit, but I retrieved my wits and stepped into the dome myself to quickly get to the other side. After getting through, I immediately turned around and saw the mofang outside on the other side of the dome, still running away from whatever it feared. But as if it had no sense of passing around the dome. As surprising as the event was, it did serve to settle a few things in my mind. I was wondering how no one on Earth noticed what happened, what had replaced this chunk of Arizona we have here. Yeah, that would have drawn some eyebrows, I think. 16772AH. I got a vent. Again, there are those who argue with me. Over and over, I demonstrate that in almost every case, whatever the process was that brought us here, it occurred at a pivotal moment. They tell their stories and they still can't admit that the abduction actually saved each of us. All of us. What is it in human nature to grasp so strongly to the past that we blame our saviors for stealing it from us? Okay, just one more bent before bed. If each of us was, as indivi was individually saved from something, maybe all of us were corporately saved from something larger. 
Can I really be sure what's left? And this. The arrivers come from various places and times. Sarah got here almost 15 years ago from the year 2055. And Uziel got here two and a half years ago from 1942. What does that mean? Time here shuffled and chaotic compared to Earth. What state is Earth in right now? When's Earth right now? 16787 AH. It's 3.15 AM and I feel compelled to journal this craziness. After spending most of yesterday maintaining a DRI, and then most of this evening discussing the nature of these worlds with CW, I had just a sip of infamous unearth oof and ooch and collapse in my chair. Well I just woke from a dream. I'm not one who puts a lot of credibility in dreams, but maybe the Uriah were able to move something in me to understand. Or possibly because of the intent discussion, my subconscious mind was triggered to be able to sort out some logical connections. Or maybe it was the hooch. Alcohol, a cause of and solution to all life's problems. <laughs> the dream. I was tending a garden, an immense garden. It wasn't for food or flowers, it was just about to help for the garden. I kept working and working to control it and contain it and make it healthier. But the garden seemed to fight me at every turn. And after what seemed like days of work, I finally gave up in frustration. And as I stood there doing nothing, the garden flourished before my eyes, growing and spreading in every direction. Because, I realized, the system that the plants were based on was not about me shaping and controlling. The natural system of plants is healthier when they are out of control. When they are free to spread and intermingle and cross-pollinate and mutate. Now, from a human point of view, that may not provide what I want. I get smaller fruit and smaller flowers and untidiness. But from the point of view of the plants, they grow stronger and much more resilient and resistant. The more they are scattered, the higher their odds of surviving. And now that I contemplate, I realize that even the individual plants or seeds may not appreciate the benefit of what's happening. They are torn far from their origins, forced into a situation that seem extreme, possibly even destroyed by new environments. But for the seeds that survive, ah, uh, the seeds that survive, that's where the real growth, strength, and abundance comes from. So beautiful and terrifying. Beyond the beauty of it all is a system and structure that defies understanding. Okay, well this is all a natural process. There are signs of something behind it all, but well, hidden signs, so, well. If I look at this, the cell, the tree, the water, the seeds, the up, the elf, even the abductions, well, it seems to be a grand system or plan. The plan doesn't take me into account. It's unemotionally intent on the elf of something much bigger. That may hurt my feelings, but, well, what am I in the entire scheme of the universe? I have no idea what, if anything, might have put this process into motion, but that's irrelevant. Tomorrow I'll talk with CW. He could be swayed from his battery plan. 17145 AH. I really don't journal much. I came to write this down because I'm distraught. As I contemplate the Sam that plan I've set in motion, I realize that I've become the destroyer of worlds. Okay, that seems a bit harsh sat down to write to seek some cathartic tranquilization and realized the last thing I journaled was some esoterically beautiful philosophy about letting this garden grow. Not so reaffirming or calming. It was calm to me. But nevertheless, here's my reasoning, because I must write this down. Simply, it's us or them. Complexly, this is some kind of garden in where the plants or seeds or whatever. Well, some of us have gotten together and decided that we're the better choice to survive. If the others have unilaterally decided that we all won't survive. I am more fit, damn it. This is not me. I want to be calm and garden or ungarden or grower. What gives one species the right to destroy another species? Who gets to choose? Do I just lay down and die because the more aggressive species thinks we're the better, more powerful? What brutal scale do I use to measure the good of some against the life of others? Does love ever destroy in order to help more survive? To help love itself to survive? Does that even make sense? Can I kill because I think oh, it'll bring about more love? What if I'm not even capable of understanding the situation of hate versus love? Maybe I'm the hater. 
Do I generate this love delusion to help me maintain my sanity and allow the choice I have made? My god, it's too much. If these are just my walls of delusion, then I choose to live, in, live within them. I am a seed, scattered by the wind. But I will not simply be trampled. I will kick and scream and survive. May God have mercy on my soul. <laughs> Someone's aggro. More paintings. Painting. Is that the Ark of the Covenant? I was wondering where that went. Cerberus by B.S. Wolf. Okay, that's a important book, I guess. Unwritten. Adventures in the Ages of Mist and Beyond. Powered by fate. Ah, the old, so like, you make your own stories or the D&D campaign thing. I guess. From caverns miles below beneath the New Mexico desert to not even root an empire that lasted ten millennia. They wrote linking books that allowed them to span universes, ignoring the primitive humans that infested the surface. But the glory of the knee was brought low mere centuries ago, and the regions were left empty and abandoned, till now. Called to the desert, we have found our way down to the knee, its secrets are in our hands, and is our and its future is ours to determine. The next chapter of the knee is unwritten. In 93, Cyan Incorporated introduced us to the unreal wonders of the unreal worlds of mist and the Dene. Now you can make your own journeys of exploration and adventure through the ages. Discovery focused mechanics, play in modern and historical Dene, unlimited possible environments. Yeah, okay. Richard Rowell Watson. Yeah. Can't read that quote because my graphics are too low. Oh, is that that PC someone made in the shape of a Mist book that plays all the Mist games? Good for them. Uh. Awry Larval Notes by CF. Carolina, I guess. Takes about three to five days for a single air eye larvae to change colors after being moved to a new surface. Pulsing stops immediately upon removal from Captar, induced by polyarchs. Cloning has been extremely easy, like potatoes easy. Organics, plant fiber yellow, bone light yellow, air encrustment green. Metals, gold pink, copper reddish orange, titanium orange. Silver, red, aluminum, reddish orange again. Tech. Mophane tech, magenta, villain extrusions near white. Stone, quote unquote granite from Captar, teal blue. Sandstone from Unraf, light blue. Sore stone from Mofang, deep purple. Shale from Murray, very light blue. Add a polyarch pod and it's always purple. To do. I'm curious about the the effect of combining various base surfaces. Still a bit odd experimenting with the life forms. The light day event is handy given our limited supply of diesel fuel. Is that what the war is about? Resource crunch. Also, they seem to have mastered it because that's pretty white light, you know? Well, if the Mofang would just twiddle their thumbs for a good five seconds, diesel would swap us home already. Or maybe just. Maybe we can take down a bleeder and see what see what where the rabbit hole goes. I don't know. Whatever the case, we'll find that out next time.